players coming in players going out transfers moving transfers doing this transfers doing that transfers transferring that's what transfers do and there have been a lot of players on the move both players leaving pit and players coming into pit and players visiting pit who potentially could come to pit it's all over the place it's tough to keep track of but we're going to try and do it right here on the transfer portal episode of the morning pit or the thursday morning pit where we talk about the transfer portal it's what we did last week and quite frankly with everything going on in the the world of the portal we could probably do a portal episode every week so let's do one today it's the uh portal podcast or the thursday edition whatever you want to call it of the morning pit right here youtube.com slash pantalaircom not the best cold open there but you know what are you gonna do you can't hit home runs every day sometimes you got to settle for a single or maybe just a hit by pitch but it's the thursday edition of the morning pit here on youtube.com slash panther i'm chris peak from panther you see the website below panther dash lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet football basketball and recruiting Find it all at pantherlair.com and, of course, message boards to interact with other pit fans. All day, every day, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. And you know the deal here at youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. It's where we put all of our video content, these daily morning pit videos, Monday through Friday to get you a little started on your day with a little bit of pit sports talk. Um, our weekly live show that we do every Wednesday night kind of moved it back from eight 30 to eight o'clock. Did that at eight o'clock the last two weeks and, uh, enjoyed it. I, I kind of like doing it at eight. So I think we might stick with that for a little while. And then, uh, we'll have some post game shows coming up during the basketball season as well. In addition to, you know, you can find press conferences and post games and all kinds of things right here at youtube.com slash pantholaircom. So make sure you never miss any of our pit video content and subscribe to youtube.com slash pantholaircom. You can turn on notifications and you'll get an alert sent to your phone every time we post a new video or every time we go live. That way you won't miss any of it right here. YouTube.com slash pantholaircom. And like this video while you're at it. We always like those. It makes me feel good to see the little thumbs up. So give me a thumbs up and I'll be happy for a few minutes. That serotonin boost will, uh, Probably wear off quickly, but at least for a little bit of time, I'll feel good. <laughs> so, transfer portal stuff. Oh, before we get to the transfer portal, I mean, we should make a quick mention, and maybe not a quick mention, about the volleyball team. Pitt women's volleyball tonight in Tampa against Nebraska. The national semifinals, the final four, Pitt, Nebraska, and Tampa. It's tonight at 7 o'clock. It'll be on ESPN. And, I mean, you talk about the most successful program at the university right now, and it's not too hard to find. It's the Pitt women's volleyball team with a chance to make history, a chance to advance to the national championship game if they can get past fellow number one seed Nebraska tonight. Five Pitt players announced as uh, All-Americans yesterday, in addition to, uh, of course, Olivia Babcock being named the national freshman in the of the year first pit player the first player in school history to ever earn national freshman of the year i mean like look these ladies are killing it i mean they are kicking ass and taking names and they're gonna try and do it against nebraska tonight and i think uh you know anybody who wasn't excited by that louisville game last weekend and the way that went down with the reverse sweep and winning three uh three sets in a row you know you have to get your pulse checked uh, and if tonight is anything like that, you're going to be on the edge of your seat. So 7 o'clock tonight on ESPN, watch it pit uh, Nebraska in the final four. And good luck to the pit women as they're down there getting ready to take on Cornhuskers. Uh, transfer portal talk. Let's get into that a little bit. Most recent news, at least uh, I think the most recent news, was last night DeAndre Jules announced that he's committing to South Carolina. Pit defensive tackle went into the portal. I don't know whenever he went in. It doesn't matter when he went in. But he came out last night, uh, came out of the portal and committed to South Carolina. And, I mean, we talked. We already talked about the impact of DeAndre Jules going into the transfer portal and the, the impact it has on their defensive line and their defensive tackle depth. Um, and it's not good. Uh, I mean, that, that depth is not good. And, you know, that's, you know, that, that much goes without saying. What's going to be interesting, and, and I can't sit here and say that I've studied South Carolina's depth chart. All right, I, I don't know what South Carolina has. Maybe they're completely devoid of players. Maybe they also just graduated three six-year seniors who were eating up all the snaps. And so there's a giant opening and a lot of snaps to fill. Maybe. 
Maybe South Carolina is in the exact same situation. Maybe South Carolina not only has three guys who ate up a ton of snaps all gone, leaving like a giant vacancy and a giant hole at defensive tackle. Maybe South Carolina not only has that, but maybe they also have a defensive line coach who is widely considered one of, if not the best at his position in college football. And maybe South Carolina also has a defense that DeAndre Jules has played in for the last five years. And maybe South Carolina also you know, has a defense that DeAndre Jules has not just played in and learned for the last five years, but that it took him five years to fully crack into the two deep rotation. Maybe South Carolina has all of those things. It's just interesting to me. And and, and I think, and you can say this about a lot of guys, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not here to, to criticize DeAndre Jules. I think everyone has to make the best decision for themselves and their families and what they feel like they need at, at this time. But there's a short game and a long game. And I think a lot of players, and, and I'm not even speaking specifically about DeAndre Jules here, but I think a lot of players have an opportunity for a short-term game, a short-term gain, I should say, and maybe they are or are not thinking about the long-term, the big picture here. You know, going to another school for one year may or may not help your draft prospects. And I, I look at a guy like DeAndre Jules, and we'll talk about talk about him specifically here. He's been at Pitt for five years. He's been coached by Charlie Partridge for five years. And quite frankly, it took him five years to get on the field. It took him five years to get into the rotation, and that's not a knock on him. That's reality. You know, he was in the rotation a little bit in 2020, I remember him playing a little bit. Spotty snaps here and there over the, the two years after that. And then this year, he fully moved into a two-deep spot, maybe started a couple of games, less than six, I think. Uh, but he was in the rotation, you know, no, no worse than the fourth D tackle on, the, on the, the depth chart and probably as high as third or second in some instances. But it took him all that time to crack into it in a defense that he knew, a defense he was familiar with, and a defense he understood and, and, and knew what to expect from it with a coach who is widely considered one of the best, if not the best at his position in the country. And so you just wonder, is leaving that situation and a defense you know and a spot that's wide open where there are literally hundreds of snaps available to be taken, hundred, you know, at least 12 starts available with a coach that has been coaching you and knows you and knows how to help you and knows how to develop you. Is it worth walking away from that for whatever short-term gain you may get out of out of NIL? And and I don't want to go down, I don't want to go too far down this path because like who the hell am I to to judge? You know what I mean? Like and, and I'm not judging. I, I, it sounds like I'm judging, and maybe I am a little bit, but I, it's not my place to do that. DeAndre Jules knows what his situation is, knows what he needs to do for himself or for his family. He's got to make the best decision for himself. And and in his view. That's that's the best decision right now is to transfer. And, and these other guys, I mean, they've had what twelve or thirteen, however many guys go into the portal. I mean, it's, it's in it, it's their decision that it's in their best interest. Now, Brandon George and Nate Temple ultimately found out that maybe it wasn't in their best interest to leave. That maybe the reasons they had for leaving weren't exactly all they cracked up to be, or weren't they weren't what they expected to find when they went into the transfer portal. And so they ended up coming back out of it. And fortunately for them, the pit coaches were willing to take them back. But I, I do think a lot of guys are going to find that maybe going, even if there's an opportunity for a bigger NIL package than they would get at Pitt, and that's not to say that Pitt is not competitive, but I mean, we're not, we're not going to sit here and pretend like Pitt, uh, you know, and Pitt's collective and those entities that are operating on behalf of Pitt, we're not going to sit here and pretend like they can offer the biggest NIL package in the country. You know, we're not going to sit here and pretend they can offer the biggest NIL package in uh, the ACC. Or maybe even the biggest NIL package in the Coastal, in the former Coastal. We're not going to sit here and pretend like that's the case. So we're not going to say that, oh, you walked away from some giant thing for, for less. But there's a balance for these kids to find of, you know, do you just look at the number? And, and, and I'm, I'm veering away from even talking about DeAndre Jules here, just sort of in a general top, uh, on a general, in a general sense, do you, do you, you know, do you just look at numbers and say this number is bigger than this number is bigger than this number? So that's where I'm going. Do it, you know, or do you have to consider other factors? 
or is it all secondary to where's the number bigger? It's it's a decision these guys have to make. You'd like to think and you'd hope they're getting good advice and have good advisors and people on their side who are, who are helping guide them in the, I don't want to say the right direction because, again, that's a judgment. But you have to hope that they, they have people on their side that are uh, guiding them in the most sensible direction or, or giving them as much information as possible and making sure they're, they're aware of as much information as they can be um, and then using that knowledge to make their, uh, you know, an informed decision. And again, I, I mean, I, it's, it's, I'm talking about DeAndre Jules, but I'm not talking about DeAndre Jules. I'm talking about all these guys. You know, are they making the best decisions for their futures? And, and we hope so. No, I, I, I hope they are. And that's not to say that I don't think they are. It's just, I'm, I'll say I hope they are. Uh, DeAndre Jules comes out of the portal. That is now, I think Pitt had three, six, nine, 12 guys who had gone into, 12 scholarship players who entered the transfer portal. Like I say, George and Temple have come back. DeAndre Jules going to South Carolina. Trey Anderson, the offensive lineman, is going to Utah State, going back home to Utah. And Byron Floyd is uh, trucking up to Buffalo. Curious one there. Scholarship long snapper in a Power 5 conference. Decides to leave and go to a, a Group of 5 conference. Uh, with years of eligibility left. Certainly wasn't run off the team or anything like that. Okay. You know, it, it's, a, it's a Viacon Dio situation sometimes. And so good luck to Byron Floyd. Now, Pitt has added a long snapper to replace Floyd. And I'm not in a position right now to pronounce his name, but he's from Yukon and he goes by Upa. So we're going to call him Upa. Um, and, and I apologize, but I, I feel like I would be more offensive if I were to attempt to pronounce his name than if I, I just am flatly honest and say that I can't pronounce his name, but Upa uh, committed, I think on Wednesday. Yeah. I think he announced yesterday. I'm losing track of my days here, but he announced yesterday that he was uh, committing. So that's a second transfer edition for Pitt. Uh, Timon Lynham, uh, Timon Lynham coming in uh, the cornerback from Nebraska, 6'2", physical corner. Seems like a good fit for Pitt's uh, defensive scheme. He's going to come in, and that's that's of all the more value because Pitt is losing three corners out of the defense from 2023. Now, I think we all suspected that MJ Devonshire would join Marquez Williams and AJ Woods, Williams and Woods being out of eligibility. I think we all assumed MJ Devonshire would join them, but Devonshire did have an extra year of eligibility left. He could have come back in 2024, uh, but the announcement came out yesterday that he was not, he is not coming back. And kind of unfortunate for him, the way the announcement came out is the Shrine Bowl announced that he had he had accepted an invitation to play in the East West Shrine Bowl. Uh, that sort of served as his de facto announcement that he's leaving Pitt. His Pitt career is over. MJ Devonshire, one of the more exciting guys we've seen uh, in a Pitt uniform. Eight interceptions over the course of the last two seasons, I think, uh, or three seasons, I guess it is. Uh, what he had three interceptions returned for touchdown last year of course the game winner against West Virginia the very first play of the game against uh, Virginia and then this year against Louisville really kind of a game clincher uh, late in the third quarter Devonshire goes 56 yards for a pick six he also had a uh, 82 yard or 80 some yard punt return for a touchdown against uh, Rhode Island not perfect uh, not without his flaws and, and and I think you could make a case that he probably played better defensively you know as a cover corner in 2022 than he did in 2023 there's probably a lot of things that go into that you know I, like the you know the pressure up front is certainly a factor but nevertheless MJ Devonshire Aliquippa guy transfers home after two years at Kentucky and, and I think had a pretty good three-year run at Pitt in 2021 through 2023. He leaves with an ACC championship. He leaves as the first Pitt player since Darrell Revis in 2006 to score on a pick six and a punt return touchdown in the same season. Uh, ended up as a second team all ACC pick uh, I think in last year uh, as a specialist, this year as a cornerback. So he's off to try his fortunes in the NFL. We wish MJ Devonshire the best uh, the best of luck. And so they're going to need corners. And we knew they would need corners. We knew that they would need um, at least one transfer corner and, and maybe more. And they got one. Uh, I talked about him earlier this week, Timon Lynham, uh, out, of, out of Nebraska. So that's two transfers so far. I think Pitt will be looking to get some more transfers this weekend. And the two names that we're really watching closely, guys that we think are probably going to end up transferring to Pitt are both coming from Western Carolina uh, wide receiver uh, sincere Lee and uh, running back Desmond Reed and 
these two guys, I mean, these these were the top playmakers for Western Carolina. I mean, they're literally, you know, if, if they transfer to Pitt, Cade Bell will be bringing his top two skill guys with him from Western Carolina. Reed, uh, a smaller back, like a 5'8", 180 back, or maybe 5'7", 180, depending on, uh, you know, or 190, somewhere around there. Uh, I think he's 188, 189 is what, it, wait, he just told me, because I just talked to him yesterday. Uh, 5'8", 170. Okay, so smaller back, but speed, uh, lots and lots of speed. Eight games this season, averaged 112 rushing yards per game, scored 13 rushing touchdowns in eight games, averaged almost seven yards per carry, and also caught 21 passes uh, for 283 yards. And then last year was sort of more of the same. And over the course of the last two seasons, he's he led – uh, Western Carolina in all purpose yards each of those two years, even though we only played eight games this past season. He finished the two years at Western Carolina with more than 2,000 all purpose yards total. He went over 1,000 each of his two years. He caught 42 passes over that time. I mean, he was really a spark plug for that offense that Cade Bell really liked to use, and he was one of Cade Bell's priorities um, after Bell got the job at Pitt and I think Bell had told you know Bell had told Reed Cade Bell had told Desmond Reed the running back that you want to make sure there was room in the running back room well after TJ Harvison transferred and you seen Willis decommitted there was room and so Desmond Reed coming in for a visit he hasn't committed yet but I think there's probably a a pretty good chance that when he takes his official visit to Pitt this weekend he'll end up committing sort of feel the same way about Sincere Lee uh wide receiver at Western Carolina, averaged 17 yards per catch this past season, played 11 games, caught 46 passes for almost 800 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, that's the kind of production you would love to see. I think that tops the production any pit player had this season, almost 800 yards and definitely eight receiving touchdowns. Uh, he, he's just an outstanding wide receiver. And, and they had a couple of really good receivers. Certainly the system benefited, the, benefited those guys. But Lee looks, I mean, Lee put up the best numbers on Western Carolina's roster, and he looks like he was their best receiver. And now Pitt's got a chance to land him. And so you add him in with the receiving group that they've got coming back of Kanate Mumfield and Dejon Reynolds, and then those freshmen, Kenny Johnson and Lamar Seymour and Zion fowler -El and Izzy Polk, like that receiving core, like how that group is coming together. Desmond Reed, put him in with, uh, you know, Rodney Hammond and Derek Davis and Montrevious Lloyd and then Jules Goff coming in as a true freshman and like how that running back room is coming together. And, and I, I think on Tuesday, I talked a lot about how Pitt's offense is shaping up and skill guys and this kind of thing. And, you know, it, it's more of the same, you know, as similar thoughts that I had that day and Lee and Reed were still waiting for them. You know, I, I think they'll commit this weekend. They're not committed now, but I think they will commit. And when they do, they will be a pretty nice addition to um to to their respective rooms to the receiver room and the running back room uh also visiting this weekend david ojebwe uh a defensive end from clemson four-star guy coming out of high school in the 2023 recruiting class a top 20 defensive end prospect in the country uh i think the number two overall prospect i believe in the state of maryland in that 2023 recruiting class he was a freshman at clemson this year he only played in two games only got about 11 snaps so he redshirted and then he went into the transfer portal. Um, you can raise a question about, well, this guy, uh, you know, highly touted guy, and he only plays in two games. What gives? I mean, I'm going to chalk that up to Clemson. have a pretty loaded depth chart from everything I can gather. The pit coaches are pretty high on him. They're excited to get him in and potentially make him a, get him as a part of the uh, team and a part of the defensive end rotation. We've talked a lot about Pitt, how Pitt needs defensive linemen this year, particularly out of the transfer portal. Um I think tackle is a bigger priority than end, but end isn't far behind, and they need both. And if they could get this guy, David Ojebwe, from Clemson, that would be a heck of an addition. And I think it would be a pretty good uh, you know, boost to that defensive end group um, as it stands. We'll see who else ends up coming in this weekend. I uh, think there's a few other guys they're working on, a few other targets they're looking at. They offered an offensive lineman from Ole Miss yesterday. I think there's a chance they'll try and get him in. Uh, there was another one, I think, from – uh, I forget what school it is. Furman, maybe, or somewhere. Another FCS offensive lineman that they're they're looking uh, to potentially get in for a visit. So a lot of uh, a lot of lines out, so to speak. A lot of lines in the water as Pitt works to 
fill out his roster from the transfer portal. And this is an annual occurrence. This will be an annual occurrence is filling out the roster from the transfer portal. You're going to lose a bunch of guys and you're going to bring a bunch of guys in and Pitt's got room to bring those guys in. We'll have some updated scholarship counts and things like that on the message boards at pantalair.com throughout the rest of the week. And as we get closer to Friday, uh, we will have uh, as complete of a list of transfers as we can. You know, last week we ended up uh, telling you about uh, Tamon Lynham and Jake Overman and, and uh, Upa, the, the long snapper from UConn. Uh, and we'll, we'll tell you about as many guys as we can find out about this weekend as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. And of course we'll have our mailbag edition of the morning pit tomorrow, right here at youtube.com slash So, Thanks for tuning in today. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantheralaircom. That's everything going on in the portal that we've been able to dig up so far. But uh, chances are there'll be more that comes out by the time you watch this video. So, you know, stay tuned, right? Because we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cover it tomorrow. That's the way it always works. But stay tuned for all the coverage of the official visit weekend coming up and the in-home visits that Pat Narduzzi is conducting this week as he heads through the final week of off-campus recruiting. We'll have all the coverage, pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. Thanks for watching this video. We appreciate it. Hope you have a great week so far. Enjoy your Thursday, man, and tomorrow it is Friday. End of the week. We made it, folks. So enjoy it. Enjoy the volleyball game. Don't forget, tonight, 7 o'clock on ESPN. Be sure to be watching that. We sure will as well. Talk to you tomorrow, the morning pit, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com.